Hey guys, Ben here from Corner Flag Games, and welcome to episode 13 of the Lencast. Today I am joined by two of our three other Lads Entertainment Network members. And firstly and foremostly, we have Terence from Wireless Vlogs. Give us a shout, mate. Thank you, Ben. It is good to be back. It's very good to have you back and your enormous amounts of ping to join us on today's episode. And uh, secondly, we have Dan from Garfield V2. Give us a shout, mate. Hello, guys. It's good to be back for me as well, because I wasn't here last week. It is very good to have you back. Unfortunately, uh, Josh is unavailable for tonight, so we are just going to roll with the three of us. So, guys, today's topic will consist of, and probably mainly and only consist of, the three of us, well, all four of us have done it now, but with the three of us that are here, let's talk about it. The FIFA 19 demo was released earlier this week. We've all had a chance to play it and uh, have a fiddle around with it. Some of us have live streamed it. So I'd like to start by saying, what are everybody, give, give to me a brief sentence before we dive deeper into some things about the FIFA 19 demo and where you sit with it. Let's start with Terence. I think it is. It feels a lot more uh, natural to play. It feels a lot smoother. Um, to, it, it feels. It reflects uh, more realistic football. I feel it does suit my sort of game play now because I'm a very defensive um, FIFA player who hits on the counter, and I feel like that's uh, slightly a bit more of an advantage this year. Um, and as a keeper, I, I want to throw in a little opinion on the keepers. I think the keeping this year with how adventurous I, I'd put it, the keepers are, um, they tend to come out of the box and, um, play with their feet, those sort of things a lot more. I think that's a good change because that is the way that world football is going. The keepers are doing that now, um, more so than I've ever seen in football before. So I think that's good. They've included that, uh, but there are still. I understand it's only the demo, but there are still those obvious bugs that will, will be hopefully ironed out uh, before the game is released or will certainly be patched in the first major update, um, which will probably come out within two days of the game being released anyway. Fantastic. That's a that's a very good a very good start and a couple of very good points there for us to get off. Now we're now going to jump across <laughs> to to Dan. Now it has been well documented <laughs> that d by himself and by others around him that uh, Dan's stance on FIFA 19 is that it's the same game in that he will not be buying FIFA 19 this year. Now I did do a stream myself of the demo the other night on the Corner Flag Games channel and uh, I was joined by Dan and by Terence and by Josh, they were all in the comment section. They were all watching and helping me out with it. And I mentioned on that stream to Dan that <laughs> I was under the sort of same opinion that FIFA 18, uh, FIFA 19 would be the same as FIFA 18, but of course I still get it because I'm a FIFA YouTuber. That's all well and good. But um, I had since uh, mentioned to Dan that don't write it off so quick. Go and try it for yourself first. So Dan downloaded the demo, reluctantly, I must admit, and um, did a live stream of it himself. So Dan, from a man who said he wasn't going to get it, would you like to give us your thoughts? Yes. Yes, I would like to give thoughts. Um, you want a brief statement? That's, uh, that's doable. That's very doable because... Check out my podcast. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been, yeah. Um, it's just the demo. The gameplay is all we can get a feel for. That's my main, still my main concern. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel good, but I'm sure no one can uh, say any different when I say, well, how many times in the past has the demo been now? And then, as T has already sort of said, you end up uh, 
with a massive update on the first one that's taken out half the stuff that you did in the demo and it doesn't feel the same as it did in the demo because it's only the demo now again we, we've just we've been talking about this on the on the hashtag wireless family podcast we just recorded so look that two i said i was on twitter that i was 98 percent sure i wasn't getting fifa i'm glad i left that two percent gap because that two percent is probably increasing a little bit and the 98 has decreased a little bit but there's still i'm still on the fence with it it plays nice it plays really nice but um yeah i mean also and Ben will know this from my own. I streamed it on Twitch. Hashtag draw specialist. <laughs> Very much a draw specialist. So yeah, I did not. Do with very that well. now out of the way, I'll now give my brief statement. Um, in saying that. I actually quite enjoy it. It has been one of the best FIFA demos, or well, more polished FIFA demos that I have played in recent years. And I think it's shaping up to be a very good game. In saying that, what I will say is... um, (coughs) Excuse me. Um, (laughs) Well (laughs) done. No, that's my gourd coming up. Um, what I will say is that the brief statement for me will be the new mechanics will change how the old game modes are played. Yeah, so so for you, yeah, for you, you see, you're going to have to sort of retrain yourself on a lot of stuff. I think we discussed this outside of the lane cast, but you're going to have to retrain. Me, having played the demo... Yes, draw specialist, but I jump. I didn't. I mean, it's not a don't don't take this the wrong way or personal jib at you. I know a lot of other people that are also playing it on a lower difficulty level to what they used to play it on, to try and get used to the new shooting mechanic. I think I picked up. The, I think I made what two mistakes in that live stream I did. I mean, they were pretty bad ones, but two mistakes I made in the in my live stream with the shooting. I've got the shooting already just off of the few games I played. <clears throat> but muscle memory and how it plays, it's perfect for my style of play. It is absolutely perfect. If it stays like that, I'm prob- if I get it, I'm probably going to have my most successful FIFA in a long time. But like you say, for someone like you who has a completely different play style, you've got to completely readjust yourself now, haven't you? I am. I am at the point where my, my muscle memory isn't as easy... Changed is what Dan's is, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, I I am in the early that in the early part of it for me, I was starting to struggle with the the changing of it. Um, Dan has a keen eye as as well when he plays, and he's always done this and has has done this in FIFA 18 Pro clubs at the same point as well. He has this little knack of being able to watch a player's feet as the game's going on which helps him dramatically with those time shots and that new time shooting me- mechanic. Whereas somebody like me doesn't generally look at a player's feet, I look at a player's body position and assess off that generally when I, if I'm going to win a ball or not win a ball based solely on that. But in saying that, let's move on to... Um, well, it, it, it look... Let's not move on. Let's finish this point first. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself now. Because I'll, I'll throw it to you in a minute. Okay, guys. Here's a question that I pose. Will this new system and these new mechanics be beneficial for older FIFA players? Or will it be more beneficial for those who are starting to play FIFA? Oh, I'll happily field this one. Based purely on the fact that... Um, we'll, we'll take for an example, the first time I played it was with yourself, Ben. Um, mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll use the shooting mechanic as the example. How quickly I was able to 
sort of adapt to it um, and how long it took you to sort of adapt to it where we played, I think, three or four games and you were able to adapt to it. But you would obviously played a few games before uh, we played together. So you did have that little upper hand, but you were able to adapt to it extremely quickly, I'd almost say. Um, you got you got the idea and the hang of it fairly quickly. It was just fine-tuning um, that took a little bit longer. Where it took me quite a bit of time to get used to it because it was a completely new thing. And I know that's just me and it does generally take me a while to pick up new things like that anyway. But um, I think it'll probably be more beneficial for people who don't have to re-hardwire how they play. You play very much on instinct and on muscle memory. And to try and retrain muscle memory is um, is not, obviously is not easy. But if you're just learning something for the first time, um, which it almost was like I was doing, it, it does take a little bit to start with, but it it's something that you you sort of, you start to do and then it just sort of becomes natural. Where retraining muscle memory, you've got to really put in a lot of work to start with and then you'll still have those little lapses in concentration where you go back to doing what you used to do. And so it, it's more of a process to retrain. And so I think long story short, I think it's going to be easier for people who are just starting to play FIFA now or who don't play very much like myself to adapt to the, the new shooting mechanic and the new passing as well where, and headers and everything like that where you have to time everything. Yeah, fantastic. Um, to, add, to add to that though, it depends how old you are as well. <laughs> here we go. Go on then. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I've said, I've said before on here, and I've said on your on the wireless family earlier, right? I've been playing since '96. There's been a lot of new features that have come and gone over the years. A lot, an awful lot of new features. Now to pick something up that's been broken in, for, in a way, or, or, or the same for such a long time once you've got it you've got it it takes a little bit of time it, it the shooting mechanic is i wouldn't say it's no i think it's better i, I, I like this precision um shot because well my live stream is a good example of that uh, with uh with jekka in front of gold ben if you remember oh yes perfect teed up per absolutely perfectly teed up for him now the only thing I did notice is I went. Sometimes I end up doing my pro club stuff where I start just bashing buttons. So I start <laughs> absolutely mashing circle. <laughs> That's not such a good idea this time. No. So Jack is six yards out, should have the volley and goal, and I'm pretty sure it went that high up. It's uh, still orbiting the fucking earth <laughs> because I got it wrong because I double tapped it. The same with the Griezmann one. I should have buried that one, but I I, I went into old school mechanics with the low driven shot. Correct. Now we can all agree that the low driven shot was probably very OP last season it or was. last year on 18. So to get rid of it is good, but to sort of still have it a little bit, but have it where you have to time it makes sense. But yes, I think your new players, you learn what you've, what you've got. So the next generation of FIFA players that are coming in are getting this one as their first FIFA this is going to be the one that they learn everything on. For me, it was 96. Me, I used to have to bash triangle to run. That's how old I am and how long I've been playing the bloody game. Because when they changed it to one button, it was like, oh my God, this is so easier. Yes, I, I would agree it with that. I, I remember breaking N64 controllers on, on FIFA 98, smashing the C left button to try and get myself to sprint. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the next generation of FIFA players have no idea that this was a thing. So, yes, I agree with T. It's definitely easier for the newer ones. But I think the older ones that is going to affect more are the ones that came in, I'd say, 2008 onwards, maybe even 2010 onwards, mm -hmm. because they've been that used to the somewhat broken mechanics that this is going to be a big change for them, like a big change. But all that will happen is they will turn it back to the old, old style. 
But then you won't see those sort of people online because online you can't play with the old style. It'll be all the new style. So, you know, maybe in a way you lose a bit of toxic uh, online play through having those people not play. But again, I still stand by it. It's only the demo. We've literally played like a kickoff game. That's all we can do. You know, sod all about anything else at the moment. Well, yes, there is a little bit of a of of the journey mode that you can play, but it's all very limited, and it's a and it's a game playing as Alex Hunter uh, for Real Madrid. Sorry, hashtag spoiler alert. Um, but the, but for those of us who do enjoy the journey, I know Dan's not one hundred percent a fan of it and hasn't played. Uh, I don't think you did it in FIFA eighteen, did you? I got most of the way through it, but mm. I just changed all my sliders just to fly through it. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. See, I, I actually quite enjoy the story that is the journey and, and will be very happy to um, to go through that and, 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 and go and finish that. But that's, again, another point. Everybody seems to be um, focusing on this um, kickoff slash um, Champions League group stage sort of mode to show off their Champions League graphics. And I have heard whispers... Uh, Unsure as to whether this is 150% true or not. Um, I don't think EA would uh, come out and state it uh, so black and white. But um, finally, um, from the whispers I've heard, that the Asian Champions League is making an appearance as well. So in regards to what that means, if, if, that, if that statement is true, that... um. A-League career modes will no longer be relegated into the gar- the dark ages of play one season, do it all again in the next season, do it all again in the next season. You actually have something to work towards now when, when winning or coming in the top three of a uh, okay. A-League season. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Yeah. It'll be something that won't affect 99% of anyone who buys FIFA. But for the 1% that is Australians or people who want to do a, an A-League career mode for whatever reason it may be, it gives the, the mode substance. It gives you something to do. As you said, it gives you something to work for. You're not just playing one season, you know, winning the league, and then you have to do it all again. There's nowhere to go. You now play through the season, and it's like it's almost now like any other any other league. You, you've got somewhere else to go afterwards. You've got that next step. You you can win the you can try and win the A League, and even if you don't, you still qualify for the um, AFC. And it's just that next step that gives content creators like us something to do, something more to achieve, and some a reason to actually make a series around the A-League. Well, yeah, and, and, and from from doing a little bit more thinking, if this um, ACL Champions League mode is, um, is inputted into the new FIFA, when it comes to the structure of how you get to the Asian Champions League and how the Asian Champions League spots are divvied up towards uh, the A-League, in saying that, I fail to see how they can correctly implement the qualification process if they are not also implementing the FFA Cup into the A-League. Well, yeah, there's another point. So there. Well, like, your thoughts, Dan? No, uh, you got you got to add realism into the game. Like, you say if they can't do this, they can't do that, that. Without sounding, you know, I don't know how to, how how it might come across, but without sounding stupid or anything, there's a lot of Australian YouTubers really that you know get the fan base. You got DK, you got Jared, you got Crispy, you got yourself now, Benno from all accounts. Uh, <laughs> going off. <the> <laughs> um, but no, right, and I know a lot of them went to Berlin, didn't they, for the. Uh, like the reveal, if you like, um, or whatever. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Like. I'm pretty sure Jared did. I know DK did, and I know Masterbucks did. 
And there you go. See this, and this is it. I think maybe the realism. Everyone likes a bit of realism. <coughs> no one can say any different. So to add in more stuff, like, like I say, you do it. It shouldn't matter what. You, you, a lot of people would be drawn to the English League because you've got League Two, One, Championship, Premiership, Champions League. You can get a bit of content out of that if you're a content creator or longevity if you just like to play the game. When you do, like I say, you do the A-League, you literally just rinse and repeat. You can get some really good players and then it gets to the stage where all you have to do is simulate every match because you're never going to lose a match and it gets very boring. So it doesn't have any longevity. If you add in a cup competition and the Asian Champions League, hey, suddenly it becomes worth doing. At least if you're going to do it in a way where you start off somewhere. So you start off, say, at the, at the Jets, you start off managing the Jets, you get the Jets somewhere, then you get a manager's offer somewhere in Europe. Start off at the very bottom. No, that would be Melbourne victory. <laughs> oh, wow. He doesn't know the A-League too well, but he's throwing some shot, real shots here. Thank you for your contribution to that one, Dan. But in saying that, yet the A-League is a generally a good place to start if you're looking to do a sort of worldwide journeyman sort of save and the rules that are attached to that journeyman sort of save. But I can confirm because... Unbeknownst to some, it wasn't very well... well, I wouldn't say that it wasn't very well publicised, but it has since come out that uh, SoFIFA have released their um, FIFA 19 database, the first lot of the FIFA 19 database uh, on SoFIFA for FIFA 19 player and ratings has now been released. And I can confirm, let me just pull it up now, that I know for a fact that the Jets are not, I repeat, are not the worst ranked side currently in the A-League for the start of FIFA 19, which is a nice change, I must admit. Well, coming runners up last year probably helped your case a little bit. Well, here's the thing, mate. As of last FIFA, we were the worst A-League side. I oh, know, you had been for quite a few years for some unknown reason. Yes, but I, I, I tend to feel that the Mariners are, are falling apart. The Jippos as a club are sort of falling apart because I think they may have been uh, giving EA some money under the table to make sure that they had higher ratings than us. Um, but yeah, we are now not the um, the worst club in the A-League. Uh, that title now goes back to the Mariners. They can have that one. But luckily enough, mate, even coming second in the league last year hasn't really changed much. They still under no, they still yeah. undervalue us. We are currently sitting fourth last, which would mean that uh, Perth is also below you. No, Perth can't. Perth are the surprise package, mate. They sit at the top. What? Yes. You're taking the mic. No, what I will do is I will take a screen capture right now. And put that up on the Len... And I will put that up in the Lencast... Is the Lencast one uh, open to everybody to be able to see? I can't Discord, remember. Yes. On the yes, Discord. Yeah. I will take a snipping tool... A, 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 a screenshot of the current A-League rankings... Now, bear in mind, these are the, only the initial ones. There are players missing. Like, I, I know for a fact that Ola Toivonen isn't in the Melbourne Victory Squad yet. So there yeah, are some... them to come in. There are some updates that are, that are due to happen. But again, the A-League tends to slightly get forgotten by EA once the game is released. And we don't generally get our first major database update for the first two months. Or something along those lines. But I will post it now in the um, the the Lencast part of the Discord for everybody to have a peruse and a look through. And I think uh, out of all these, surprisingly, Terence, what? you're going to what? get a shock. He's just seen I it, just... ladies and gentlemen. I've no, that's. <coughs> I'm trying to figure out. 
You're trying to figure out why you have the exact same attacking overall as what the Mariners do? As the Mariners do. Yep. I am quite shocked at that, to be honest. I am. I expected City to be top. I think probably everyone did. You'd have Sydney sitting just under them. I would have had us in fourth. Uh and then probably between yourselves and Adelaide uh, and the bottom three would have, well, been pretty obvious as well. But to, to see how each team has been ranked there, I can agree with some of it, but some is complete and utter horseshit. Well, well to be brutally honest, the A-League does tend to get a bit forgotten by EA because there is no, you know, major... Cup competitions that fall in line with it, that they generally don't put a lot of effort and work into the A League. Um, but in saying that, though, um, Terence, from what I can see here, when they've done the like how it how it gets those numbers of the attacking, the defensive, and the midfield rating balance, from what I can see, um, they go by by primary position and how the squad is laid out. Yeah. Okay. In saying that, right wingers and left wingers don't count towards the attack, especially with the base formation that's been put out. The only player that it's getting a rating from to give it that attacking rating stat is Kenny Here's Athew. Your forwards. Yeah, okay, yeah. And looking at your squad, Kenny Athew is the only one that's listed as an out and out striker. That will be why your attacking stat is so low. Yeah. Once they bring in, count. once they bring in Ola Toivonen, and like they said, you would assume that he's playing as a striker. Yeah, he will be. And he will be listed in the game as a striker, no doubt, or even a centre forward, which will still count. That will balance the attacking stat rating between Kenny Athiyu and Ola Toivonen. It will find a so middle ground it, and balance it out, yeah. so that will rise. It, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I sort of understand that, but it's still, yeah, it, it doesn't. It just doesn't look right, does it? No, it doesn't. But it will get forgotten about for a little bit. Yeah, in three months' time, when they update it, we can come back and have a look, mate. Well, yeah, if and when. Uh, Dan, thoughts? Sorry, I wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> Is that because we were talking A League once again? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's. I don't that... know enough to be able to put my two pence in. Okay, so so let's have a look at. I mean, we can go back to talking about some of the, the mechanic side of things, uh, of, of the new demo. We'll, we'll sort of put that, uh, to the left of us slightly, whilst we talk about a a couple of. What I'd like to see, uh, uh, we'll have a look at the Sophie for ratings for a moment and just have a look at some, uh, you know, some of our teams as a whole. So we'll have a look at Derby right now. I Derby. Hope it's not too much because we don't have a divine right to be anywhere, but. Okay, so I've pulled up the listing for the English League Championship now. Follow on here, lads. And currently, based on overall rating, attack, midfield, and your defence, Derby County sit fifth in the English League Championship. Oh, well. Go on, then. Yeah, I think we were quite high on the last one, though, as well. You were. Would you like to know who's sitting in sixth, though? Forest, no doubt. Forest. <laughs> they literally bought Graben in the summer from Bournemouth <laughs> and now suddenly like the bookies were even like oh yeah they're going to get promoted and they've got all these bloody Portuguese nonces in as well and literally everyone seems to think that they're going to get promoted <laughs> <laughs> so yes Darby is sitting in fifth Forest is sitting in six, so we'll go to your top five. From fifth is Derby, fourth is the Dirty Vile, 
Third is West Bromwich Albion. Second is Swansea. And up on the top is Stoke. Yeah, yeah you expect that though, wouldn't you? You do. You do. Unfortunately for myself, Birmingham City, who play in the exact same league. 17th. Uh, two, three, four. <laughs> Sixteenth. Oh, it's close. Sixteenth. <laughs> so Birmingham has taken a bit of a tumble. Unfortunately, That's a rise, isn't it? No, it's a tumble. It's a slight tumble from last year. Um, <laughs> where I think we were a very much a. I think in when when FIFA eighteen was dropped, I think we were a t- an attack was seventy two, a midfield was seventy one, and a defence was seventy one. We've dropped to. 70 attack, 70 midfield, and 69 defence. We're nestled comfortably in that list between Preston North End above us and Brentford below us. Oh, well, that's um, great company there. Yes, great company there. So, to be brutally honest, you can't count the last three because they're the ones that come up from League One. We're six from the bottom. We're six from the bottom, not including them. There's... Room, room to improve, Ben. Room to improve. Always is. but And that isn't to say that that is how it is going to be when FIFA is finally released. This is only um, so FIFA's pre-release um, estimation, is it not? This is based on the first database build that went yeah. live, I would assume, for um, the capture event in Berlin. Yeah, yeah. So it will be updated before FIFA is released. Oh, more than likely. There'll be an opening day patch or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is how things currently sit if you were to plug the, plug the CD straight in without doing an update. This, how does so- that make you feel? Do you agree with it, both of you? Um, we'll start with Dan. What were the, were the championship ones? Or just with the, the, the stats in general at the moment or, or round? Because I, I always find it quite um, a hard thing to try and get your head around why, why <coughs> teams have good stats. You know, like, well, like, for example, why are Stoke the favourites? Why, why are Stoke the favourites to be the team that, it, in terms of the championship and if you were to look at a career mode and how likely that means they were to go up. Why would they be the team they think they're going to go bounce straight back? Mm. When you've got the likes of West Brom and Swansea who have, you know... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Um, so, in, in the case of Birmingham, I would say that it's... Based on previous season results, I would say Birmingham are actually quite lucky. To have dropped so little. Okay. To be fair. And what's your what's your reasoning behind that though? Well, obviously, where you finish the prior season in real life, EA sort of takes that very literally. When they build their, when they look at another team, and go right. Do we up this player's rating? Do we lower it? What what stats and attributes do we modify? Yeah. In saying that, based on the squad that we did have last season, um, I, I feel that Birmingham is actually a little bit more balanced now as to real life. What I don't like is for the championship, for some teams... There is an absolutely horrendously massive gap when it comes to the starting transfer budget. Oh, have they got the what the transfer budgets are going to be as well? They, they sort of do, but I've generally never looked at the starting transfer budgets on so FIFA. I've, I've generally taken them with a grain of salt. because they sometimes don't mirror their the real life counterpart. But if we are going based on transfer budget, let me just pull up my list. 
Uh, your three ex-Premier League teams, you would assume, are up there in your top three. Um, two, three, four, five. Derby only make it into the top six. Uh, Birmingham um, are one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh last when it comes to transfer budget. But the daylight between the two sides. So the lowest transfer budget is Bolton Wanderers. And unfortunately, these are in euros, which is they get a 2.3 million dollar, uh, 2.3 million euro budget. Well, wow, that's nothing. As opposed to Stokes, who sit at the top at 31.5 million euro. Yeah, yep. 15 times more. Yep. Uh, Dan? Yeah, but then look at it this way. Yeah, look at it this way, though. Like, if you're going to do a career mode where you want <coughs> a little bit of, you know, you want it to be a little bit hard for yourself or, you know, a little bit difficult you're going to pick a team like bolton over stoke if you want it to be a breeze and you're going to have no longevity in it at all that's a few times i've used that word it's a big word as well mm. very long um <laughs> but if you, you know you're going to pick a team like bolton i mean we we play our fifas and we take a team from league two for god's sake who have like no budget you have to literally make your own budget. Yes, yeah. We, we, well, yeah, that's generally how our career modes generally go. In saying that, Dan, unfortunately, Forrest, when it comes to this regard, are sitting on top of you. Yeah, which is about right because they got taken over and they reckon they've got money and they've thrown a bit of money at it. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, they, they sit with a 20.8 million euro budget and you guys sit under them in the next place with a 14 million euro budget. So 6 million euros in one space. Yeah. So to be fair, we've had the financial fair play stuff and all that jazz. So to, the fact that they've still got us as having a lot of money is nice to know. I actually think that the financial, what's been happening in the real life financial fair play has actually affected the transfer, the starting transfer budget of some clubs because Villa sit in, in mid-table obscurity when it comes based on transfer budget. Too bloody right. For the rich club that they think that they are, they sit with a starting transfer budget of 5 million euro. With the likes of... With the likes of... Just under them, the promoted Blackburn Rovers with 4.8 million euro. And what what is the prize for um, winning promotion from League One to Championship? I oh, know it's not. Obviously. We... Well, apparently that's sort of something that they reckon either they, what people have wanted changing or has changed um, because they said that you got no money for getting promoted, whereas I thought you got a lot of money getting promoted on this year's or on 18. It, 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 it depends. It also depends on what league. Yeah, obviously, but I always thought there was that incentive and that kick on that was sort of meant to financially help you in the next the next league up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your daylight not... uh, your daylight in your your transfer budget really it it's night and day once you hit the Premier League. Yeah. Like you might you might only get, you know, ten million for being promoted in top spot in in the championship. But, you know, you finish fourth last in the Premier League and you get something like 110 million. Yeah, yeah. The game, although I will admit, the game is very good at assessing how much it's going to give you the next season. But that also comes based on your board and what club you're using as to whether out of that 110 million that you get, you'll probably only get 10 of it and the club gets 100 and it gets lost in the game somewhere. 
But anyway, we've been waffling on about this uh, 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 quite a bit now, and uh, I'd just like to turn around and say that um, we'll quickly run through the English Premier League. Um, so, Terence, your Arsenal sit in one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, fifth position. That sounds about right to be fair. Yeah. Would you turn around and say if it's fair that Tottenham and Hotspur are sitting in the place above you? Moving on, where's Liverpool? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. No, you got to answer it truthfully. Yes, this is a club that's having a new stadium. When Arsenal, we, when you were building the Emirates, you had that much money that you were, you know, you should have had, or probably did have back in the day, that sort of transfer budget. Hmm. So, so is this still financial or is this team no, rating though? No, this is based on overall rating. Yeah. Oh, we're not on money side of it no more. Right, nope. okay, sorry. Um, again, I would argue yes, because you've got an unknown entity after Wenger's left to an extent. Mm-hmm. We are, but yeah, I'm not going to comment. No comment. In saying that, though, you, your heavy hitters are your top six. And of those heavy yeah. hitters, uh, you guys... You guys actually have more of a transfer budget than what Spurs do. You guys actually sit fourth on the transfer budget when it comes to overall transfer budget. Because that of the surprises board. me. No, because of the board we have there. Um, you, you'd you never know it under Wenger, but they are quite willing to give money to whoever's at the helm. Yep, so you guys are sitting there with a 92.5 million euro transfer budget. Fuck. Yeah, which is actually close to... It sounds very close to what it's rumoured to actually be um, from people within the club who have um, not out and out said, you know, this is what we've got, but, you know, that's ballpark region of what it is known to be. Mm-hmm. So that's, that might actually be something to go off. Yeah. So based on current rating, in top spot, you've got Man City. In second, yeah. you have Chelsea. In third, you have United. Fourth, you have Spurs. Fifth, you have Arsenal, and sixth, you have Liverpool. Ah, uh, Josh. Uh... Now, I actually want to ask you because on paper West Ham have you know a decent team, but they're you know quite um, they're quite Spursy at the moment. Where are they sitting on overall rating? They're sitting in eighth, above Everton. I feel like that's where they should actually be this season. I, I feel like they should be so much better than they are. Unfortunately, mate, some, sometimes they don't swing the axe that way. Who I, I feel, know. who I feel sorry for is Huddersfield. No, you feel sorry for Moy. No, I feel sorry for Huddersfield. How long have they been in the Premier League for? This is their third season. This is their second season. Second, now, I think. oh, yeah. second season. Yeah, two of the. Two of the teams that were promoted from the championship are sitting higher than them. They're sitting second last. Wow. That doesn't sound right. Both Fulham and Wolves are above them. On rating money. and on budget. Yeah, but that money has probably played a key in that as well because Fulham and uh, Wolves have spent money and they've got good-ish players in that shoot, to be fair. Mm-hmm. But Huddersfield aren't any slashes themselves, though. No, they're not. Actually, I'd quietly rate Huddersfield. And then you've got the the Toons, who are sitting uh, in uh, what I would say that in in the top half of the third, because that's you know good maths, Ben. <laughs> but uh, you've got you've got the Toon who are sitting above Brighton, Hove Albion, and Bournemouth. Mm. History. Which is quite interesting. History, you say, Dan? Yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't disagree with that. It feels like sometimes when they're doing these things that, you know, Newcastle at one point, you know, you've got to remember the, I would love it, I would love it if we beat them. You've got that. And, you know, um, They've been in Europe. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's where they go off it. Sometimes I don't think I don't know. 
Like Bradford, for example, always seem to have a good rating for the low league they're in. But it feels like just because at one time of day they were a premiership club, that's what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. So what we're go- what I'm gonna do before we and we're gonna and we're gonna leave it at the end of at the end of this, we're going to check out in the English league who is the worst club. So Accrington I- Stanley. No, no, actually not Accrington Stanley. <laughs> no, mate. Morecambe. Okay, so Dan's pick is Morecambe. Terence, what's your pick? Oh Jesus, I'm not actually sure. See, oh. I used to always go. If I was doing an RTG, I always used to go. Now this is probably four Fifas ago now, but I'd go Wickham, mainly because I I remember they were either there or they were thereabouts, uh, and for that simple fact alone, I'm going to say Wickham. Okay, well, mate, you're completely out I because Wickham are in League One. Is, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm my memory isn't as good as I thought. <laughs> Dan, on the other hand. Ballpark? What, Dan's ballpark? Yeah. He chose second last. Oh, Jesus. Okay, he just was give me... very, very, very close. Dan, Terence, the worst team in the English Football League for this FIFA is Crew Alexander. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, if I get FIFA 19, that's the team I'm going to pick to do my... Uh... <laughs> so your bottom my, three... My team with. Your bottom three are Crew Alexander on the bottom, second last is Morecambe, and third last is none other than Tomahawk 79's Newport County. <laughs> Where does Stevenage rank? Because we were having a conversation earlier on the Hashtag Wireless Family podcast. The uh, my are, youth platoon did they are ninth well, last one, one above on Newport. my channel. You see, they're saying that we're saying that my youth platoon actually did quite well with Stephen Edge in terms of views, but no one left any feedback to say that they wanted me to carry it on. So if I do get it, I'm wonder, I don't know ever to go. Do I go down the Crew Alexander route or do I go down the carry on with the Stephen Edge? Well, Stephen Edge are, are are sitting in sixteenth, mate. Okay, so Stevenage could be a, an, an idea then. Crawley is sitting in 12th. And uh, surprisingly enough, even though they do sit at the bottom of EFL League 2 at the moment, Notts County are actually sitting in 3rd. Well, I could believe that. Again, history and money spent. Yep, and they've still got a million, a million euros in their transfer budget, which is quite high for a League 2 team. Very high for a League Two team, to be fair. Yep. So there's three teams in League Two that have a million euro transfer budget or more, and they are Notts County with a million, Bury with one point one, and MK Dons with one point three. So yes, yeah, some interesting stuff. But yeah. we're going to we're now going to leave uh, the the Sophie for ratings to the wayside. Because I think we've waffled on enough about them. I got caught I up in it. Yeah, we, we sort of got a bit wrapped up in it and, and, and have changed tact for the episode, but that's okay. So, guys, what I will say right now is if you haven't found your tweet of the week yet, go find it whilst we talk about the next topic. Uh, I may have already <laughs> retweeted one of them. You may have already can retweeted I one retweet of them. it. Can, yeah, can I only retweet <laughs> it and then retweet it so you can see it? I suppose. I don't know how... But we'll, we'll keep it till the end. We'll keep it till the end still. Uh, just bear with me just a moment. <coughs> Sorry, I needed to... Bear mute, with him. I needed to mute the microphone so I could cough. Okay. Oh, we I need microphone one. for that, do we? <laughs> well, I do. I, I, I tend to do it. Um, so, yeah. Okay, what have we got here? So, we're going to, to jump back tact for a moment and um, talk about some of the, the the new mechanics in 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 the FIFA 19 series 
So we'll start with the major one, and that is the timed shooting. Now, before we go too much further into this, what I am going to say is the timed shooting is optional to an extent. What I have worked out is that if you don't want the time shooting, it can be sort of switched off to make it feel a little bit more like the FIFA 18 way. I don't believe it should be. You should have the option to turn it off because I feel as the FIFA community grows or as FIFA grows in in its year and year, uh, a certain amount of player adaption needs to happen. Yeah. Right? I have been speaking to some people who have said, oh, no, it's just a gimmick. I'm going to switch it all off and play the same way I did in FIFA 18 and FIFA 17. No, you're people... giving away who said that. You said the word gimmick. Doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to name names. If people want to name scrub through... Boys. If, pe- if people want to scrub through the depths of the internet to find out who that is, that's up to them. Or they could just ask Dan, right? Alternatively. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's all well and good. They can do that. So there is that option. In saying that, I feel that the real advantage a player is going to get in the FIFA 19 game will be because of that time shooting. Oh, well, partly because of that time shooting. If you can master well, that, gotta... that is going to be a yeah, massive it... advantage. Yeah. Also, remember remember as well that, that that's going to be every online thing. So it's all right doing like a career mode or, or, or a single player thing with the old uh, shooting system on. But if you're going to stop playing online, you're going to be awful. <laughs> let's just be honest. <coughs> let's, be, let's be completely frank. Not Brian, just Frank. You're going to be awful because because you've not been practicing or you've not been playing with the old the the new method. You've only got the old method to you. Yeah, and I would dare say that they're going to give people that twelve month adjustment period. But I dare say that for FIFA twenty, if they're going to, for FIFA twenty, if they do call it FIFA twenty. That, that that the old mechanic will be finally removed. Yeah, it will be. I'd expect so. I, I would dare say that EA are going to give people a 12-month adjustment period. They'll tweak it again before going into FIFA 20, but it will be the way forward. But that's, that's what you want in an update, though. You want updates not just to patch things. You want that to be what they're looking at doing going forward. So that is what you now have 12 months to get used to for then the next FIFA's to come where that is the way it is going to be. You don't want them to do something for a year and then go back to what was already happening because it just feels like they're trying to make you happy rather than they're actually trying to fix the game. Correct. Okay, so we've all had our thoughts on that and we'll leave that be for for this moment. The next thing I would like to discuss is in relation to the new 50-50 mechanic. And I I was telling Dan about this one, and I actually very, very much like this new 50-50 system, that it is now at a point where every ball is winnable. Doesn't matter whether you're at the side of a player, doesn't matter whether you're three feet away from a player, Every ball is now winnable under this new, what I would call the 50-50 system. You can actually, when a header, when, when a ball comes, when a cross comes into the box, if you are a foot behind the player, that it, the opposition player that it is going to go to, you can muscle them based on a balance and a strength stat, plus using the 50-50 mechanic, it is now possible to sort of wrap your leg around the front of said player to get a touch on that ball. Whereas in previous FIFAs, if that ball was coming in and you know that you were a foot behind that other player, you knew by damn sure that you weren't getting that ball. 
Yep. By and large, some absolute miracle player who's got the heading stat, you know, high end of the gods, like somebody like Diego Costa. Or the big man in pro clubs. Or the big man in pro clubs himself. <laughs> there was no way in hell you were going to win that header. You wouldn't even bother. Sorry for the kid. You wouldn't even bother contesting for it. This 50 50 no. system changes that. And it, to be fair, it's something that we've been calling out for for ages as well. And it's something that I don't know if it was almost given up on that people sort of gave up on it ever being fixed because it sort of died off all the complaints for it. But um, it, it's just, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. It, it's realistic. And that, as I was saying before uh, at the start of the episode, the game just feels more realistic to me. It, it's, you now, as yeah. Ben was saying, you have that chance when in previous FIFAs, even though in real life, yeah, you would have been able to make at least challenge for the ball. Now you've got a chance of winning it. And it, it, it just makes more sense. It should have been done so long ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've talked about the what I would call the major mechanics. And uh, as, we can, as we can hear, Dan's kids are sort of getting a bit super restless. So... We might uh, start to, to, to wind these things up. So what I'm going to do now is up in the top right-hand corner, in the eye, is going to be a pole. <laughs> and the pole is going to be, after coming out and saying on live streams and to us all personally numerous times, there is a 98% chance that Dan is not going to get FIFA 19. So we're going to put a poll up in the eye right now. Do you think Dan is going to get FIFA? Do you think Dan is going to get FIFA 19? Vote up in the eye be- at, at the eye above. So we'll now quickly leave that to the wayside and we'll quickly fly into our Tweets of the Week. So, lads, Tweets of the Week. I, I saw a smashing one. It made me laugh at work. Uh, let me see. I can unre- undo retweet and then... Oh, no. Oh no, I've lost it. <laughs> that doesn't work very well. <laughs> well do you want me to uh, do mine while you're finding that there, Dan? Well, well, I'm finding that one. That would be great. <laughs> yep, go ahead, okay. G. So mine uh, highly reflects... I, I thought this was very good to bring up on the Winecast because it highly reflects the, um, the internet issues I have to deal with. So it, it's one of those things where it's a tweet and then a comment. So the tweet is, today in math class, I had the urge to fart. I had the bright idea that if I dropped my textbooks and farted at the same time, nobody would hear it. I dropped my textbook, everyone looked at me, then I farted very loudly. Someone commented, ping, 398 MS. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> I thought that's fantastic. And you have tagged the Lend Network in that one? I have done so. Fantastic. I can now have a look oh, at it. Dan, God. have you found yours? Yes, but then my phone decided to do that thing where it turns to the fucking landscape. Right, here we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm good. Let's do old, the... Uh... Old people and technology. Yeah. <laughs> there you go and i'll tag you all in them too it's one that you're going to definitely want the sound on for because it made me laugh too much uh-huh. it was perfect Flat. flashback to when an arsenal fan was having a crazy rant to park life Oh no. <laughs> Do I dare wanna Have you got this one over comms, Benny? Oh wow. Alright, I'll I'm going to put this over comms so people can have a bit of a listen. Um, yeah. So just give me a second. Change a winning team, You see the lineup. Why did you change a winning team? Oh, and it's gone. You see the lineup, why did you change a winning team? <laughs> Well played, Dan. Well played. Well played, Dan. Well played. See, okay, and, and I'll slow that. I'll roll into mine now, and mine comes from Odds Changer, and it was a quote by the <laughs> the the famous Watford striker Troy Deeney, who, contrary to popular belief, 
is oh, he is a he is a blue nose. <laughs> he is a blue nose out and out, and he has stated that many times. And it, it's a quote from an interview that he's done recently, and it's Troy Deeney. Too many people just want to be told how great they are. Just be happy with yourself. We've all got flaws. I've got a big head and teeth like a shark. So what? It is what it is. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. It is. And, and he now admits that. Good on him, though. Good on him. Yet yeah, I had agreed. So, well, we are now going to wrap up after the tweets of the week now, guys. So, I'm now going to throw to my two commentators who are with me right now. So, I will throw to Dan from Garfield V2 for his sign-off. Thank you for turning up today, lads. Thank you for listening, peeps. And you stay classy, San Diego. Thank you very much for joining us on the Lencast once again, Dan. And to the other Len member here, Terence from Wireless Logs. Uh, thank you for uh, being awake to record this with fellas. I had great fun. And uh, at the end of the day, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Beautiful. Thank you very much for being along with us again Terence from Wireless Vlogs and from myself. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Be sure to give the video a like if you enjoy it and leave your comments and feedbacks down below if you are watching this on YouTube. You can also leave comments if you are listening to this on podcasts.com. Don't forget to smack that subscribe button if you haven't already and tick the little notification bell to be notified every time we upload a video. For all those that don't know, please check out in the description below all the links to all the Lads Entertainment Network and the contributors will be in the description below. So please go and check out all our social medias as well. For all those that don't know as well, we do have a Discord channel with separate sections for the Lencast and the Lads Entertainment Network. So if you guys want to have a chat with us and have a bit of a banter, jump onto there. We love hearing from you guys and we'd love to hear from you guys more in the future as well. So guys, that is going to wrap up this episode of the Lencast. So we will see you all next week.